Hello, how's everyone doing? It is your fallen angel back with another video. Today, we are going over physical brahmacharya and mental brahmacharya. So without further ado, let us begin. It is very necessary that you should be pure in mind if you wish to be a brahmachari. Mental brahmacharya is more important. So it's essential, guys, that not only are you being physically pure, but the mental has to also be pure as well. So you could be a full brahmachari. The mental is more important than the physical. I want, you to, I want to give you an example like this. The brain is like the CPU. The body is like the motherboard. And then your vision is like the graphics card. Without the CPU or the motherboard, you won't be able to operate. And without the graphics card, you won't be able to see the beautiful visionaries. They're all in cohesion. But the brain, it has to be pure. Because if your brain is pure, you can control everything else. You can control the entire body. You may succeed in physical brahmacharya, but you must also succeed in mental brahmacharya also. So it's easy for men to re restrain themselves for a few weeks, few months, maybe for a few years, right? For some, maybe not. But for some people, of course, they can... If they can, they could probably put their body to the restraints and avoid any sexual or involuntary or voluntary copulation of those, sort, of those sorts. They can always avoid it. But can they keep their mind pure? Can they avoid lust? Can they only think pure thoughts? Can they actually control their mind the way they think they can? Now, this is much more of a difficult task than controlling the physical body. That state of mind wherein no single sexual thought enters the mind, is termed mental brahmacharya. If thoughts are impure, the sex impulse will be very strong. Brahmacharya depends upon regulating the whole course of life. So, your thoughts, your emotions will create your physical reality. So if you can control your mind, you'll control your whole life. The sex impulse is very strong. The reptilian brain within your brain, this part of the triune brain that we've explained. This wants to reproduce and survive. That's what it really wants to do, right? And it's a very, very strong urge in your body. Now, to overcome this urge and to think completely pure is going to require you to single out this reptilian brain and only use your neocortex, which will be difficult for many because they only know how to survive reproduce feast and fight or flight right this is just the triune brains reptilian and limbic system in play which overpower the neocortex our area of discrimination when you cannot control the lustful thoughts at least control the physical body physical brahmacharya must be strictly practiced at first so like we said the mental part is more difficult than the physical but if you can contain the physical, you will learn to control the mental, right? Now, we always explain on this channel that there's three parts to brahmacharya, the prana, the mind, and the physical body. The prana is your breath. You need to learn how to control your breath for any instance in life. If you learn how to control this breath, you can get through anger, depression, trauma, anything. You can use your breath to overcome anxiety, anything. You need to learn how to control the breath. With the breath, you can control the mind. With the mind, you can control the physical body. Now, all three of these are the trinity of brahmacharya. Control the body when the sex impulse troubles you. Mental purity or mental brahmacharya will gradually manifest. So, first it's to restrict the, mental, the physical body. And then with this over time, with meditation, controlling the breath, and with pure thoughts... Brahmacharya will definitely manifest in your sphere. Surely, it is better to control the karma, indriyas, at least than to indulge actually in sensual pleasures. Gradually, the thoughts will be purified if you persist in your japa and meditation. Eventually, there will be direct control of the mind also. So, with more meditation, with the more control you have over the physical body, you will definitely have more control over the mental, right? And if you can control the mental and the physical, there's nothing in this plane of reality 
that you can't control. You can control every aspect in your life. Almost, almost to a hyperfixated point where things don't operate out of randomness. Things operate out of how you want it to operate because now, you are the controller of your reality, which we all are the controllers of our own reality in our micro universe. But for the most part, if you can contain this immense sexual energy, whether you're man or woman, anyone can be a brahmachari, you can control the physical plane. A sexual act, a sexual contact, revives all bad ideas and gives them a new lease of life. Therefore, the body should be controlled first. Physical brahmacharya must be maintained first. Then only you can ha achieve mental purity and mental brahmacharya. So the first step is definitely to contain the physical body. But if you are able to control the mental, the physical and the breath all at once, then you will really establish yourself as a brahmachari. No matter how you go about it, all three have to be in cohesion, the breath, the mind, and the physical. If you're only containing the physical, you would not allow your kundalini, the oja shakti, to reach the entire brain. If you're only doing the mental, then you will never allow the oja shakti to reach the brain because you're physically depleted. So you have to be physically completed, mentally completed, and really, really in touch with your breath as well. You may be able to stop copulation for months and years, but there should not be any sexual craving or attraction for women or men if you're a woman. Evil thoughts also should not arise when you look at a woman, when you are in the company of a woman. So like we explained in our previous videos, you should never look at anyone with lustful eyes. You should always maintain a pure sense, right? Don't allow your animalistic desires to overpower you. Right, always lower your gaze, always control this because it's essential because it may start off as a thought and these thoughts end up being an emotion and then they become bigger than what it is. So it's essential to control your thoughts, control your gaze, control the mind because that's truly what differentiates us from animals is our ability to say yes and no, our ability to discriminate. This is our tool with the neocortex. We are greater than other animals in this sense because of our massive neocortex. If you succeed in this direction, then you are established in perfect brahmacharya. You have crossed the danger zone. Thought is the real action. An evil desire is tantamount to adultery. So your thoughts are very, very crucial, right? There's plenty of people that have very, very negative thoughts, right? Everything starts off premeditated, whether this is an assault, whether this is this, anything of degradation, anything of sexual acts, anything of anything starts off as a premeditated thought, right? It's these thoughts that create the illusion and then it gets put into the physical plane. The action or the experience is about 20% of this lifetime. 80% is your thoughts and how you perceive life. So it's essential to remain pure both physically and mentally and control the breath as, as best as you can. And you can do this through constant meditation and japa with the mantras and using mudras and things of that nature. The desire is more than the act, but there is a great deal of difference between the actual shooting of a man and thinking to shoot a man, between actual copulation and thinking to have intercourse with a woman. Philosophically speaking, thinking to shoot a man or thinking to have copulation is the real act. Even if there is a single impure sexual thought in mind, you can hardly expect to have strict mental brahmacharya. So it's hard to maintain a full brahmacharya scale if you still have impure thoughts. Sure, you can definitely be physically engaged, but these desires you still haven't controlled, right? You control the physical body, that's great. But you have to control the mental body. This is also very, very crucial as well. The mental is probably the hardest to overcome for many, many aspirants, many, many aspiring brahmacharis. 
because the mental is so overpowering. These animalistic desires are so, so overpowering. So just to control the physical is not enough, but to control the mental is the true challenge. You cannot then be termed as ur veretas, or one in whom the seminal energy flows upwards towards the brain for being stored up as oja shakti. There is a tendency for the semen to flow downwards, even if there is a single impure thought. So as we know, we've explained previously that the seminal energy is going to act like a gas when it is not in a pleasure state. When you're in a pleasure state and ejaculation happens, the seminal energy, the seminal energy comes out of the, the testes, but this also mixes in with prosthetic juice. This is what we know as ejaculation. But when there isn't an excited state and you aren't in this excited state, the seminal energy will act like a gas. This is why when you're breathing up, the air, the semen will act as a gas to climb up the spine and reach the top of the brain. This is why it's important to control the mind and the physical. Because only then will the semen climb all the way up to the brain and reach this Oja Shakti point. What we know as moksha or true liberation of impure thought. The state of mental brahmacharya must be kept up even amidst temptations and sickness. Then only you are safe. The senses begin to revolt during times of ailment and also when you come in contact with sense objects. So, no matter what state of mind you're in, whether you're in a state of play, state of sickness, state of happiness, state of anger, state of frustration, any state you're in, even in times of ailment, you have to always maintain a strict mental brahmacharya. Do not let any outside source, any external stimuli around you control you. You control yourself. So it's essential to always keep a strict, strict state of mental brahmacharya in the midst of temptations and even sickness. If thoughts of a lustful nature manifest in your mind, it is due to hidden passion. The cunning diplomatic mind seeks silent gratification by looking at a lady and talking to her. Mental, matunam, takes place secretly or unconsciously. The force that drags you is hidden passion. Now, if you aren't aware how things consciously or subconsciously happens, your mind may trick you to do certain things, whether this is to approach, talk, talk lustfully, play, tease, etc. These things are ways that the mind will try to plant seeds, right? The mind will try to plant subconscious seeds. And now you may, you may think, well, this was nothing more than just a s subtle flirt or subtle tease, etc. But the mind, it knows to not only try to not necessarily confuse you, but more or less try to put you in a position to act out on desires. This passion, this lust is very, very strong. And the body will sometimes try to act on its own, right? The body will try to trick the mental. But as long as you're very, very strong with the mental, the body can never trick the mental. But it will definitely try because your brain strongly, strongly, strongly requires this reproduction. Everything around us is life force that has happened because of reproduction. You are here today because of this reproduction. The sex energy has not been sublimated thoroughly. The vital being of pranamaya, kosha, has not been regenerated and purified perfectly. This is the reason why impure thoughts enter your mind. Do more japa and meditation. Do selfless service in some form for the society. You will soon attain purity. So, oftentimes guys who are, they always complain, many times even in our semen retention videos, people say it's very difficult, the urges are strong, right? It's because they aren't transmuting their energy. They're not putting it into something that's greater than themselves. This energy is very, very strong. You can either put it out into the cosmos and maybe can create a new life. Or you can keep it inside and allow this energy to flow through you and you can create something greater. 
So whether this is you learning something new, whether this is a new hobby of yours, whether this is a new job for you, whether this is a creative thing for you, music, art, anything, you have to transmute this energy into something greater, something of a selfless service to help society, maybe help the cosmos. And then not only will you feel more, more happy and more blissful that you did something so selfless for for the greater good of the cosmos but soon this act will also help you attain purity because you're transmuting this energy thoroughly you're not wasting this in in frivolous copulation and frivolous nerve tingling learn to cleanse your mind with the water of purity or celibacy with the soap of divine love how can you expect to become pure internally by merely washing the body with soap and water Internal purity is more important than external purity. Now, in this cosmos, in this world, many people care about how they look on the exterior, right? They care about how they are viewed on the exterior, but they aren't good people on the interior. You have to focus on being a good person on the internal. This divine soap of purity and celibacy will allow you to be the greatest person within the inner Atman of yourself. There's many people that care about the external very, very much, right? They care about how they're perceived on the external. But on the internal, it's a scared being. They are scared because they don't truly love themselves, right? There's this Drake verse that goes, I know this one girl's vision was to visit Rome. And when she got to Rome, all she did was post pictures for people at home because all that mattered was was impressing the people she's known, right? People in society care more about being perceived as a good person rather than actually being a good person, right? Because they want to be validated for being a good person, but they don't want to put in the work or the consequences of being a good person, right? Being a good person, being pure and being celibate is a form of sacrifice. It's not the easy route at all. That's why people would rather be perceived as such than to actually do it. So stop worrying about the external, what people can see through light apparatus. Soon it will all dissipate. It will be nothing. You will go back into the soil, thoughtless. But the internal matters the most. The soul is forever. The inner most self is the most important. Whether we talk about Brahmacharya, Hinduism, the Kabbalah, the inner most inner self is the most important. Continue the life of Brahmacharya. Herein lies your spiritual progress and realization of the true self. Do not give a new lease of life to this dire enemy lost by repetition of the sinful act. Keep the mind fully occupied. Intense musing on the objects of sense does more harm to the inner spiritual life than actual sense gratification. If the mind is not rendered by pure sadhana, mere mortification of the external senses will not produce the desired effect. Many people in this cosmos, this is not to judge the people in this cosmos for, maybe they don't know better, but for the people that do know better, this is to this is just a word of thought. Many people are constantly, constantly at the grab, grasp. They are reaching for the next materialistic good. They're treating people as exposables and loving materials. When it should be the other way around. They should love the people around them and use the materials. But it seems like this rat race that's going on in society to chase the more materialistic good to Feel like you're better than the next person, right? It's this constant race and it's this constant thirst. It's like feeding a dragon without any internal organs, any without any internal organs. So if you keep feeding the dragon, it's just going nowhere, right? The food is just going nowhere. It's this hunger that never, never gets finished. It's a quench, uh, it's a quench of a thirst that never, ever gets satiated. This material desire, it will never ever please the spirit the inner spirit does not care for the material 
self-mortifications, you will never be sensely gratified through any of the material world. You will never, ever find joy in the material world as much as you will find joy within yourself. And this is the true purpose of why we're all here, is to realize the inner self. And you may find this out through other people, experiences in your life, family, friends, lovers. Anything in this cosmos would Fibonacci loop you to try and find yourself again. Now there is always hope, but it's essential to understand that the physical world is to be enjoyed, sure. Be of the world, but do not be of the world. And what this means is, you can enjoy the world around you, but don't let the worldly being be the end-all, be-all. Recognize your soul. Recognize who is in the interior. This is more important than the external gratifications. Although the external senses are mortified, their internal counterparts, which are still energetic and vigorous, revenge upon the mind and produce intense mental disturbance and wild imagination. So the mind under brahmacharya will produce such a intense, intense, vigorous imagination. Your right hemisphere brain is very, very creative in all of us. So it can create many, many scenarios that don't even exist because of this potent life force, this bioelectric life force that is within all of us. It is the mind that really does all actions. A desire arises in your mind, and then you think. Then you proceed to act. The determination of the mind is put into action. First, there is sankalpa, or thought, and then comes action. Therefore, do not allow the sexual thoughts to enter the mind. So it is essential to understand how these thoughts work. It starts off as a thought. These thoughts are followed by emotions. And then comes the action in the physical plane. So it's essential to control your thoughts out of anger, lust, any of the seven deadly sins. And to truly, truly immerse yourself as a brahmachari. To not just say that you're a brahmachari who's abstaining. This is not the main goal. is to just say, I'm abstaining because I want to abstain. But it's to find the inner self. This is part of the journey of the inner self. No space is empty at any time. This is the law of nature. If one thing is removed from a place, immediately another comes in its place to take its place. The same law holds good in the case of the inner mental world also. Therefore, it is necessary to enter sublime divine thoughts to replace evil thoughts. As you think, so you become. This is the immutable psychological law. The vicious mind is gradually divinized by entertaining divine thoughts. So guys, this has been another video in our Brahmacharya playlist, specifically going over physical Brahmacharya and mental Brahmacharya. Feel free to check out the other videos in this playlist. Like and subscribe, leave a comment down below. Check us out on Patreon, Rumble, Twitter, Instagram, things of that nature. This has been your Fallen Angel, and I am out.